If you want me to continue with my work, it is crucial to support the channel via Patreon. Moreover, make sure to subscribe to Bobby's Perspective on Rumble. All the links are in the description box below. May Allah bless you all. Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, today we're going to react to a very surprising video by Ben Shapiro claiming I am a Jew. Wow, you don't say. So guys, this video will be very long. So therefore, before we jump into it, do me the favor. If you enjoy my work over here, leave me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And if you want to further support my work, you can check out the links in the description box below. And now, with no further ado, let's have a look. I am a Jew. Those have been the words say. of the Jewish people for three Poker. millennia. Those were the words Surprise. of the men, the women, and out. children of Masada. Those were the words of the followers of Bar Kokhba. Those were the words of Jews in Granada in 1066 and the Rhineland in 1096 and Khamenevsky from 1648 to 1657 and Kishinev in 1903 and Hebron in 1929. Those were the words of Jews in Auschwitz and Treblinka. Those were the last words of Daniel Pearl. And those are my words too. They're the words of my parents, the words of my wife, my children over the weekend. So what he does there is called setting the stage. He's setting the stage with an overly emotional argument, if you will. He tells you that all of those people that have been persecuted, those poor people that have died, all of them equally said, I am a Jew. And therefore he equates the word Jew with victim. His audience gets the impression that every person that has been victimized said, I am a Jew. And therefore they automatically subconsciously equate victim with Jew. This is how he sets the stage. Very disingenuous. My people, the I Jewish people expect were attacked. Less. They're murdered, mutilated, our women were raped, our children were kidnapped. Sure, proceed. This has happened millions of times before to millions of Jews across history. Jew hatred exists because evil exists, because there are people who have, for literally all of human history, hated the Jews and sought to strike at them while they are weak. Yet again, he continues with the victim card listing atrocities from the past. However, the numbers are the numbers and past atrocities do not justify the atrocities that the Israeli government committed on the Palestinian people. And as you said yourself, yes, we're talking about women and children here. Look at this statistic over here. This comes from the Forbes magazine and this is the human cost of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict from 2008 to 2020. In black, we see the death and in red we see the injuries. So the injuries are way too many to count and we're talking about serious injuries here amongst them as well, amputees and such. But let's just focus on the death toll and you can see that we have 5,590 people since 2008 on the Palestinian side, dead Palestinians amongst them children yet again. And on the Israeli side we have 251. So now you can build that straw man again and call everybody an anti-Semite that is not agreeing with your narrative but the numbers are the numbers. And the oppressed people here are, of course, the Palestinians and not the Israeli occupier. Jew hatred exists because evil exists, because there are people who have, for literally all of human history, hated the Jews and sought to strike at them while they are weak, who have blamed the Jews for their own problems, who have crafted complex conspiracy theories about the supposed power of the Jews, who have sought to destroy to murder, to mutilate, to rape the Jews. So I don't have any dog in this fight. I come from the Balkans, from the former Yugoslav Republic. I don't have any reason to hate the Jews, nor am I blaming the Jews for my personal problems. Yet again, an absolute straw man, of course. You do not have to hate the Jews in order to see that people are oppressed, nor do you have to come up with conspiracy theories. Yet again, you can just look into the statistics, you can look up the numbers by Forbes magazine, should be a reputable source, and see that the death toll is on the Palestinian side and not on the Israeli side. Why don't you take this into consideration? It is because you're using a tactic which is called gaslighting. You're gaslighting your audience. If you side with the Palestinians, you're hating the Jews, you damn conspiracy theorist, you hate the Jews and you are siding with evil. Jew hatred is always evil. Yet again, you're gaslighting, you're building a straw man. Nobody speaks about hating Jews. Nobody has any issue with the civilians of Israel. Nobody wants them dead. We simply want freedom for the Palestinian people. We want occupation to end. From Pharaoh to Haman, from Hitler to Hamas. <laughs> the words of the Nazis are, are indistinguishable hmm. from the words of the Hamas Charter. Oh, really? The chain of Jew Hold hatred them. is unbroken. 
For two millennia, since the destruction of the last Jewish dynasty in the Holy Land of Israel, those Jew haters were ascendant. Yeah, fantastic. More claims without any proof whatsoever. Quote them, please. I want to hear that quote from Hamas that is indistinguishable from Adolf Hitler. I really want to hear that. That would be absolutely fantastic if you could provide something. Yet again, this is not about anybody hating Jews. Stop playing the victim. This is like Black Lives Matter all over again, Jewish edition. This is so extremely ridiculous. We're speaking about people that have been massacred for decades now. Their land has been stolen. If there's any hatred, let's call it out, of course, it would be Palestinian hatred. You guys hate the Palestinians. This is why you are ethnically cleansing them. No longer. That is the promise of the state of Israel. Never again. The Jews will not stand by. They will not be murdered. They will not leave their biblical homeland. They will not surrender. They will be strong and courageous. Chazak v'amatz. As Joshua said 3,000 years ago. Fantastic. He just continues with empty words that are supposed to mean something. You are making an ethnocentric claim, just as Adolf Hitler did. Woohoo! Yes, this is exactly what Adolf Hitler said. He wanted to reunite the Germanic lands, Austria, Germany, parts of France, parts of Poland. He wanted to reunite it again. This is Germanic land. Don't you see it? It is Germanic land, a birthright to the Germans, and therefore absolutely justified for Adolf Hitler to occupy those lands. Don't you see? You're using the exact same strategy here. Back in the day over 3,000 years ago, this was Jewish land, therefore we have to reconquer it. Let's take all the European Jews that are not Semites, therefore the whole term anti-Semite doesn't even work on those people because they are Europeans. It is what it is. Nevertheless, let's take all of those European Jews and migrate them into Palestine. Let's declare this Israel. Let's take over their country. Let's kick those indigenous people out of that place. Now you tell me which narrative is closer to Hitler, Hamas or Israel? Israel is indispensable. This exactly. has been proved. It is indispensable. Its presence is a miracle. Its strength a gift. Thank God for the state of Israel. <laughs> there are people who say that anti-Zionism yeah, is, is not anti-Semitism. Exactly. Tell that to the dead women and children in Sterot. Tell that to Hamas, who proclaim in their charter, quote, Israel will exist and will continue to exist until... Ben Shapiro woke up this morning and decided to commit every fallacy there is. This particular fallacy would be the hypocrisy fallacy, of course, because he's repeating over and over again how children have been killed by the other side. I already showed you the numbers and the exact same thing on a much, much greater scale can be said about Israel. You are the oppressor. Don't try to fool us. Claim in their charter, quote, Israel will exist and will continue to exist until Islam will obliterate it, just as it obliterated others before it. Mm, there are those who say, yeah, yeah, blah, 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 more baseless assertions. We all know that Islam saved the Jewry. We are here on the Jewish Chronicles, and you can see that Jews themselves admit Islam saved Jewry. This is an unpopular, discomforting claim, for whatever reason, in the modern world. But it is a historical truth. The argument for it is double. First, in 570 CE, when the Prophet Muhammad was born, the Jews and Judaism were on on the way to oblivion. And second, the coming of Islam saved them, providing a new context in which they not only survived, but flourished, laying foundations for subsequent Jewish cultural prosperity also in Christendom through the medieval period into the modern world. The article continues. I'm going to list it for your reading pleasure in the description box below. Ben Shapiro, you are a hypocrite. The really Arab conflict is a cycle of violence. Only the morally blind, obtuse, could ever say such a thing. <laughs> yes, more gaslighting, show... please. Yeah, only the morally blind. Don't you see? You're morally blind. You're pure evil. You hate the Jews. Gaslighting after gaslighting. Yet again, I showed you evidence that Islam is responsible for saving the Jews. I showed you data that more Palestinians die. You're not listing any data. You're making empty claims. Today, I'm going to show you videos. And the videos I'm going to show you are going to be ingrained on the inside of your eyelids for the rest of your life because this is what evil looks like. Yeah, the thing is this, I would love to show you videos as well. However, if I would show you those videos here on YouTube, my channel would get deleted in a heartbeat. That's just what it is. Of course, you can find videos in several... 
where you can see what the Israelis have done to the Palestinian women, children, etc., etc. But I'm not going to be too emotional about it like you are. You're jumping from one appeal to emotion fallacy to the next one, trying to manipulate your viewers. Today, I'm going to show you videos that will be seared into your brains. Look, look, because this is what moral equivalence brings. The rape of women, the kidnapping of children, the murder of hundreds of innocents, including full uh, families. Hundreds. Look. Yeah, absolutely right. He said something correct there. He didn't claim millions. He said hundreds. And yes, this is the death toll yet again. Hundreds of Israelis, 251 till 2020. And you see thousands of Palestinian deaths. For decades, we've been told that if you look evil in its face, that was somehow unsophisticated. That to pretend evil away was an act of intellectual virtue. That to cater to evil, to concede to evil, was the pathway toward a better more peaceful world. It was a damned lie. Look, <laughs> there are those out there who are proclaiming the complexity of it all. Those people are fools. They are fools. And what is worse, they are enablers of evil. They are fellow I travelers. I absolutely they are agree. I agree again with him here. If you're making the subject into something more complex than it is, the reality is very, very simple. Israel was created in 1948. Settlers came to Palestine, formerly known Palestine, and occupied that land. Over time, more and more European Jews migrated to Israel, taking over the Palestinian land, kicking out the Palestinians. End of story. Fools. They are fools. And what is worse, they are enablers of evil. They are fellow travelers. They are justifiers fellow of the worst human rights violators on the planet. Human rights People who violators. target civilians and hide behind them. Ah, okay. Today, I'm going to let evil Anybody? show you its face. Okay, thank you. Do not turn away. Look. This weekend, this, is so fake, this was the worst day for Jews since the Holocaust. Oh. And because I'm an American, mm. Americans love justice. Americans love the good. Americans resonate to the book of Psalms that says, hate evil, those who love the Lord. Uh, hate evil. Hate evil. Yes. And so this is how we get back to the Judeo-Christian values, of course. Come on, fellow Americans, which are predominantly Christian. Let's fight together. Let's fight against evil. Yet again, it does not matter that Jews hate Jesus Christ, that they say that he boils in excrement and semen. All of that does not matter. Christians and Jews, let's unite and fight off the bad, bad, evil Muslims, of course. Unfortunately, over 90% of Zionists are actually American conservative Christians, and therefore now Ben is recruiting them for his cause. He's telling them, hey, guys, you, you hate evil just like us. Let's fight together. He's building up a fake pretense here, of course. Jews, as I said, hate Christianity. They hate Jesus Christ. And moreover, the Christian Americans, of course, they love good and they hate evil. Just as they hate evil when the government infiltrated all of those Arabian countries and bombarded them. And fight it. Sure, I believe Americans you. always have and they always will. I know we will. Yes. I'm a Jew. World police. Those aren't just the words of martyrs. They're the words of heroes. They're the words of Moses in front of Pharaoh and Jonah on the boat and Esther in front of Ahasuerus. They're the words of the Maccabees, and they are the words of the soldiers currently serving in Gaza, protecting their families, and protecting their children, and protecting their land. I yeah, yeah. am a Jew. Appeal Let me tell you what those words mean. We're all victims. They mean I'm a child of the people of the book, the people who brought the world Moses' message of freedom, and Jeremiah's message of justice, and Isaiah's message of hope. The people who represent the root of the values of the West. Is it the people that persecuted Jesus as well? The people who preserved the tradition, thousands of years old, stretching back to Sinai, the no people idea. of the Ten Commandments and the splitting of the Red Sea, of the Holy Temple, and of Abraham's one God. So Abraham was obviously not a Jew, but as he said correctly, Abraham's one God. And this is why it is called Abrahamic faiths. However, the only faith that is truly adhering to the claim that there is only one God worthy of worship is, of course, the Muslims, is, of course, Islam. And we are following the prophetic message of Abraham, Ibrahim alayhi salam. Member of a people who will not be victimized again. Israel is called the 300,000 reservists. Okay. <laughs> People are volunteering in mass of numbers. Of course not. So after five minutes of playing the victim, now you're going to say we're not here to be victimized again. 
Alright, guys, I'm gonna cut off the video here because it's way too long and he simply continues appealing to emotion over and over again, just repeating the same narratives and then in the end even quoting the Old Testament, the Hebrew Bible passages that should evoke your love for Israel. Talking about the past when in Israel existed, talking about Bible passages that speak about good and evil. However, not mentioning passages of the Hebrew Bible as this. Now go and compare completely destroy the entire Amalekite nation. Men, women, children, babies, cattle, sheep, goats, camels, and donkeys. The reason why I read out this passage is not to condemn violence altogether and say there is never just warfare or war is always inherently evil. I'm not here to say that. No, war in self-defense especially is of course very needed. And the Jews would say that the Amalekites were the evil ones and they needed to fight them because they were the oppressor. Wouldn't you take the exact same stance now if you were somewhat objective? Of course you're not objective because you're an ethnocentric nation nationalist, claiming to be an American, but your identity is of course you are a Zionist and you support Israel. Obviously, da. You have absolutely no objectivity on the subject matter. You can't even distinguish, or maybe you don't want to distinguish, what is really going on here and who is right and who is wrong. We all know who the occupier is. By your own given standard, the people of Palestine have every right in the book to fight their oppressor. This is what your scripture teaches. So ultimately, I do not have to address my Muslim viewers here because they already know no right from wrong. Unfortunately, I have to address the Christians, the little Christians that are still watching my channel. Please do not get... Honestly, Christians, please, you're better than this. Don't let this little guy belittle you into believing you're standing up against evil. Just do your research, check out the objective data, see where the death toll lies, and you will be able to tell right from wrong, good from evil. All right, guys, and this is it for today's video. If you liked it, leave a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. And if you want to further support this channel via Patreon, for example, all the links are in the description box below. Thank you so much for your ongoing support, guys. And as always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.